and welcome. You're watching Head to Head on UATV and I'm Alas Gerdjuk. Today we're talking about the Ukrainian song. It has always meant a bridge from present to our ancestors, their traditions and their values. I would say Ukrainian song is a museum of Ukrainian history itself. And to your information, some artists are seeking for inspiration in it, researching it, and after transforming into a modern wave, giving it a second breath. Today we're lucky to have one such artist in our studio. Joining us is Hanna Hreniva, Ukrainian jazz singer from Berlin, composer and pianist. Hello and thank you for being with us today. Hello. It's a pleasure to have you here. So as I've said, you came to Ukraine to research the Ukrainian song. Tell us about your project and the idea behind it. Well, I am a jazz singer, actually, and at some point I realized that I'm really, uh, that I really need something in the music that is not from the American jazz history, but something that is more connected to what I am and what I do. And at some point I started to um, sing Ukrainian folk songs and arrange them for my trio and then quartet and then quintet. And at some point I had a concert in Berlin and the woman came to me, she was from uh, the area of Lemberg and she said, oh, you know, this song reminds me very much on this very particular area where people sing uh, in this and this um, tradition. Mm -hmm. And I realized that my knowledge about Ukrainian folklore and traditional ways of singing is very limited. And um, I decided that I really have to come here and travel all around the country, which I didn't make in the end because the country is very huge, um, and try to find people uh, who would sing for me. And in the beginning, it was very complicated to find somebody who would, you know... Sing for you. So you just, you want to collect Ukrainian folk songs. That's what you want to do here, right? Well, I wanted to get to know more about the music, like just about the songs, as music, as notes, about the performance, about the different sounds of voices, and about the characters that are singing this music. And then to transform them into your jazz. Well, or get to some... transform them okay. into something that is maybe more modern, maybe not. It's still mm -hmm. in the process. But you're a Ukrainian jazz singer from Berlin. Uh, tell us, um, um, where do you come from? Do you come from Ukraine or were you born in yeah. Germany? Yeah, actually I was born in Siberia. Okay. Then when I was four months old my parents moved to Ukraine because my father is from Ukraine and his parents told like, come on, come back. And I grew up here next to, near to Kiev. It's like one hour car drive. Mm -hmm. And when I was 13, my parents emigrated to Germany. Okay. That's where I grew up and studied. So That's since right. 13 years old, you basically, your life uh, is based in Germany. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so you decided to come here in Ukraine. How long did you spend here traveling around and searching for people who would sing for you? And also you mentioned that uh, it was kind of difficult to find people who would actually sing. Well, in the beginning, I mean, I'm not uh, um, a scientist or a musicologist or ethnological researcher. I'm a singer, so I didn't know in the beginning how to find the people that I want to find. So I just uh, went to, to a director of the Philharmonie um, in Odessa, a great woman. She's amazing. And uh, she said, like, uh, well, you can go to this and this place. And in the end, I ended up in Tartar Bunari. Ismail Astis, but I didn't, but it was like, yeah. Then I found a woman actually, but she didn't want to, to speak with me or to sing anything for me. So, um, yeah, it was not easy, but in the end we were lucky because there was a Bessarabian Yarmarka mm -hmm. and we could record some choirs. And actually, uh, during this few days being in Bessarabia, I realized that Ukrainian folklore, first of all, it's Ukrainian folklores. It's many different things, many different traditions, many different sounds, but also it's not only like in Ukrainian language, like other ethnic um, Tribe. groups. Yes. Uh, and actually, the Ukrainian farming. song is very, very different. It uh, has yeah. always varied <clears throat> by, the, by the region of its origin. So what could you observe uh, based on this? I'm not sure if... Uh, the groups that we found are representative for areas because they themselves told that this tradition of performing is very unique for this village okay. and nobody around them is performing in that uh, manner. Mm -hmm. But I think if you go to um, 
Well, we went to um, Kriborivnya, this, this famous village. This is Ivana Frankivsk region, mm -hmm. exactly. Carpathian Mountains. And there probably there are some similarities of performing things. And contrary to that, we went to Fasova, which is very near to Kiev, and uh, met um, Alexei Zayets, who is leading Barvinok, a group of uh, grandmothers singing, and they said that these songs that they are singing, they exist only in this village, only in Fasova, and around them um, nobody is doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, well, there are many differences. I also met a wonderful folklorist, um, Irina Fedun from Lemberg, and she actually explained to me a lot of uh, like theoretical things, how to group different performances, if it's two voices, if it's three voices, what kind of intervals are sang, uh, that gives you a possibility to find out how old the different songs are so there are a lot of differentiations oh, wow. and it's not possible i think to group them like in huge regions i think there are like it would be like probably not possible i don't know but i'm not a, um, a researcher i'm a performer well yes you know so i i said that you are doing this for yourself for your own inspiration and this yeah. is the the most interesting <clears throat> thing and uh, it is not a secret that folk music isn't really a commercial one and also um, probably ukrainian music wouldn't be commercial in germany i want to know what leads you on your path to choose uh, this folk um, music and also Ukrainian music in Germany? Um, well, I think uh, I'm not doing music to uh, reach any kind of um, commercial success, but just because I have to. And whatever feels natural and uh, exciting to me uh, is right. So uh, if I would uh, have this um, goal to be a world famous uh, successful performer record selling or, performer or a rich person i probably wouldn't be doing music mm -hmm. so this is your inner feeling that leads you in this yeah well this is this is uh, very flattering for ukrainian to hear this kind of response and uh, where are you based right now as far as i know in, in berlin, berlin and uh, weimar or no yes exactly i am studying in weimar but i live in berlin okay so how much does the ukrainian diaspora in uh, these two cities appreciate the ukrainian folk songs or the or generally the ukrainian songs let's say uh, um well i think uh, they're really appreciating it i there is no such thing uh, like a Ukrainian diaspora in Weimar. There, first of all, the city is not that big, and secondly, uh, there are only few, let's say, immigrants. Uh, but in Berlin, I found a lot of people who are very happy to hear somebody performing Ukrainian uh, traditional songs in different ways just because it's the language and they mm -hmm. are happy that somebody is trying to, um, um, you know, offer it to a bigger audience and introduce people to this music. And coming back to Ukraine, how did people <coughs> react here uh, to this mission that you follow to collect the Ukrainian folk songs and bring them in Berlin and then transform them into your art? Differently. Mostly they were very happy about that and excited and they wanted to support me but some of them were a little bit skeptic because they said that the, I mean I also totally understand this because transforming things means also break some rules possibly um, use the material to uh, create something that is maybe not as connected as they would like to see it or maybe there are people who like uh, the pure form of the Ukrainian folklore performance. Mm -hmm. Just vocal and with par this particular sound of voice. And um, these are all rules of uh, the folklore that I probably won't follow. And I also met people who didn't like this idea. Who didn't like. But that, definitely I believe that there should be some, uh, some motives that uh, you, that probably have touched the strings of your heart the most. Could you please demonstrate us and sing a little bit for us? Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Za to má nám ničoho nevidno. Tilky vidno duba zelenoho, duba zelenoho. Tilky vidno duba zelenoho, duba zelenoho. Tu man jarom, tu man dolenoju. Za to má nám ničoho nevidno. Tilky vidno duba zelenoho, duba zelenoho. Tilky vidno duba zelenoho, duba zelenoho. Tu man jarom, tu man dolenoju. Za to má nám ničoho nevidno. Tilky vidno duba zelenoho, duba zelenoho. Tilky vidno duba zelenoho, duba zelenoho. Bravo! That is so nice. That is, and there Thank couldn't you. be a better conclusion for this conversation. Thank you so much for your art. Thank you for singing in this studio for the first time. I think artist has uh, performed in uh, my interview. And uh, thank you for being a guest today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I will anticipate this new songs based on this uh, collected folk art here in Ukraine. Thank you again. Thank you. 
That was Hanna Hreniva, Ukrainian jazz singer from Berlin, who is researching Ukrainian folk songs. Thank you for watching Head to Head. I'm Oles Gerdyuk. Goodbye.